As many of you already know, here on this YouTube channel, we believe survivors, alright? And that makes all of us, even you watching at home, it makes you morally virtuous just from me saying those words. No action required on my end. Yesterday, the creepy porn lawyer, Michael Avenatti, was arrested by police after allegedly laying his hands on a woman. Initially, he said, well, I did not hit her. I did not. Here is a bit of a timeline from the TMZ article. At 4.10 p.m., we were initially told by our sources that the alleged victim was Avenatti's estranged wife. We now know it was not. The incident involved a different woman. At 4.50 p.m., law enforcement sources told TMZ the LAPD has already obtained an emergency protective order prohibiting Avenatti from going near the alleged victim. We're told they will serve him with the legal docs before he's released from custody. We're told he will be released on $50,000 bail. And at 5.50 p.m., Avenatti bailed out and held a brief news conference saying, I have never struck a woman. I will never strike a woman. He added he's looking forward to the investigation and is confident that he will be fully exonerated. I look forward to being investigated. Now, some of you might remember, but if you are unaware, Michael Avenatti was accused by his ex-wife, a different woman, of being emotionally manipulative. I don't think she alleged any physical harm done by him, but she did say that he threatened to burn everything, all of their finances, just so she wouldn't have it. So that's the type of person Michael Avenatti is despite his constant virtue signaling to try to convince the world otherwise. This quote of his was up on his website, but I have a feeling it won't be up there for too much longer. Don't tell me what cases you've won. Tell me who you've beaten, Michael Avenatti. Well, tell me, Michael Avenatti, who have you beaten? There seem to be a lot of women on that list. This is from an exchange between Michael Avenatti and totally genuine conservative commentator Ben Shapiro. Michael Avenatti says, Donald Trump plays tic-tac-toe, we play chess, and we keep swinging. And Ben Shapiro says, you don't swing in chess, which is a very Ben Shapiro reply. And then Avenatti replied, no, but you do when punch a bully in the mouth repeatedly. Michael Avenatti is apparently just as good at English as he is at practicing law. Here you have it, folks. My girlfriend was bullying me, guys. She wouldn't leave my apartment. She hit me first. What a brave, stunning and brave individual Michael Avenatti is. Here's another one of his posted on March 25th, 2018. Words to live by. One, there are results and then there are excuses. Two, if you can't take a punch, you don't belong in the ring. Oof. And number three, credibility matters a lot. I wonder, is it his entire apartment that is the ring or just his bedroom? I wonder. Now let's take a look at a few flip-flops. This is Just Gary, posting from October 4th, 2018, back during the Kavanaugh hearing. I hope women know that there are a lot of men out there who are allies. We believe survivors. That's right. That's right, chat. YouTube. We believe survivors. We believe women. And together, we can fight to stop Kavanaugh. Ah, that was successful, wasn't it? But let's look at another post from the same individual. This was from yesterday, November 14th, 2018, in regards to Avenatti being accused. Arrested on suspicion of domestic violence. Republicans tried the same smear tactic with Stormy Daniels when they baited her at a strip club not long ago. I'll wait for more facts. Funny how due process matters now. Well, the difference is there was no arrest made in the case of Kavanaugh. There wasn't even a police report. But now due process is super important. Funny, isn't it? This one's from professional Twitter activist Ed Krasenstein on September 27, 2018. Dr. Christine Blasey Ford is literally trying to hold back tears while talking about her beach friends. Well, that's not what he says. While giving her opening statement to the Senate Judiciary Committee, I dare you to tell me that she's making this stuff up. She she made it all up, bud. It was clear as day. 
Hashtag Kavanaugh hearings. Well, I wonder what he thinks about Avenatti being arrested. Here he uses the phrase ongoing investigation, which is used continuously by cable news pundits when they refer to Robert Mueller. If you criticize Mueller at all on TV, they say, oh, it's part of an ongoing investigation. So I thought I would draw that parallel. This was posted yesterday, November 14th, 2018. There is currently an ongoing investigation into domestic abuse allegations against Stormy Daniels' attorney, Michael Avenatti. This is how men accused of violence towards women should be treated. They should be investigated so we can learn the truth. Take note, Republicans. So from here, let's take another look at the TMZ article where they say that Michael Avenatti said, she hit me first. We're told Wednesday afternoon the woman was on the sidewalk on her cell phone with sunglasses covering her eyes, sobbing, and screaming on the phone. I can't believe you did this to me. I'm going to get a restraining order against you. We're told security brought her inside the building, took her upstairs, and Michael showed up five minutes later and ran into the building. He screamed repeatedly, she hit me first. We're told he angrily added, this is BS. This is effing BS. We're told he tried getting into the elevator, but security denied him access. Well, that'll be it for this topic. We'll be back in just a second to talk about Alec Baldwin's new show, which has failed miserably. You all know of Alec Baldwin, if not for his decades starring in Hollywood movies, then for his borderline obsessive fixation on a political world he does not understand. He goes on the desperate SNL, uh, Saturday Night Live, to those who don't watch, and you're not alone, by the way, to do this week's Trump impersonation, where sycophants cheer and remind him of how funny he is. The ironic part is that his regular voice is closer to Trump's than his impression. I find it likely that Alec Baldwin and Trump have a lot in common. In either case, you might think that because of Baldwin's success in the entertainment industry, that he must be a talented entertainer. Finally, Alec Baldwin got to put away his Trump impersonation and start up his own weekly talk show to prove to both himself and to the world that he is the brilliant entertainer that he likes to think he is. The Alec Baldwin show was getting promoted quite a bit on Twitter and I was poking fun at it while it was going up, and those promoted tweets were going on my timeline, and I would retweet them. The tweets I made mocking their show got more engagement than their show's promoted tweets actually did. ABC quietly announced on election night that the Alec Baldwin show would move from its prestigious time slot on Sunday evenings to a less desirable Saturday night spot amid disappointing ratings and negative media attention surrounding the hot-headed thespian. Repeats of Shark Tank. <laughs> Repeats of Shark Tank will replace Baldwin's beleaguered talk show on Sunday at 10 p.m. The Victoria's Secret Fashion Show Holiday Special and The Sound of Music will also air on Sunday nights. Alec Baldwin, BTFO. The Alec Baldwin Show returns December 8th in its new time slot, 10 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays. Variety, a leading Hollywood trade publication, said, ABC has all but pulled the plug on the show, pointing to the program's dismal ratings. Variety noted Baldwin's show is one of ABC's lowest rated programs, and its last episode only attracted 1.5 million viewers. 1.5 million viewers on national television on a night when there's nothing else to watch. Ah, <sighs> that's rough. Well, that'll be it for now, but we will be back either later today or tomorrow with a video about Jim Acosta suing the White House because they revoked his press pass. Poor Jim Acosta. Poor CNN. Poor Fox News because they decided to jump in on the lawsuit on behalf of Jim Acosta and CNN. Never be fooled. Fox News has always been on their side. They just pretend to be rivals. But anyway, that'll be the end for this video. Here it is, your moment of clarity. My name is Donald Trump, and I'm a big fan of Israel. 
And frankly, a strong prime minister is a strong Israel. And you truly have a great prime minister. In Benjamin Netanyahu, there's nobody like him. He's a winner. He's highly respected. He's highly thought of by all. And people really do have great, great respect for what's happened in Israel. So vote for Benjamin. Terrific guy. Terrific leader. Great for Israel.